Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. As the world witnesses technological leaps, the United States Navy continues its legacy by investing billions of dollars in the construction of new battleships. The construction of these vessels might take around four to seven years to complete, making the launch a significant event. It's more than a mere nautical occurrence for the United States Navy. It's a ceremonious embodiment of tradition, technological prowess, and national strength. Cloaked in white uniforms, sailors stand proudly as others prepare the launching method that enables the ship to enter the water safely and gracefully. We have already begun developing missions and protocols the future ships. With every modern ship launched, the U.S. Navy got stronger. A diverse array of ships contributes to its strength, including destroyers. From their name, destroyers constitute the war fighting of the U.S. Navy. They are capable of destroying anything that stands in their way. Their medium size makes them agile, cruising at a high speed of over 30 knots. Operating independently or within various naval groups, destroyers are the linchpin of the U.S. Navy fleet. With a diverse arsenal, advanced sensors, and swift responsiveness, these vessels enforce maritime law, deter adversaries, and ensure global stability. Considering their central role, the Navy continues modernizing its fleet of destroyers. On August 16, 2023, a new battleship, the Ted Stevens, was launched. Built by Ingalls Shipbuilding, the 76th Arley Burt class destroyer was launched using a floating out technique. To ensure safe positioning in the dry dock, the Ingalls Shipbuilding team employed massive rail cars to carry the ship from the yard to the platform. The dry dock was then moved to a deep water position to enable the platform to submerge and set the ship free. Within three days, the team completed all of the necessary arrangements for the launching ceremony. Life inside these warships is full of challenges. The crew must ensure all of the systems work properly. This aviation electronic mate and boatswain's mate, for instance, tackle essential maintenance tasks. They tighten, clean, and paint lifelines, which is crucial for ship safety. With the ship man 24-7, everyone stands watch, serving as the eyes and ears at all times. Though schedules may vary, daily routines include various systems maintenance, damage control drills, training, and recreational time. The tight-knit crew ensures constant vigilance, even as the monotony of ship life can make days blend together without a conscious effort to keep track of time.
With every day on board, the crew becomes experts in leveraging the Arley Burke class destroyer's formidable offensive capabilities. Armed with surface to air missiles, torpedoes, and anti ship missiles, these warships are versatile guardians. Detecting and neutralizing threats across domains. Conducting close in weapon system live fire drills hones their ability to counter threats at close range. On the other hand, the 5 inch Mark 45 54 caliber lightweight gun excels in engaging surface and aerial targets. The littoral combat ships, or LCS, are another crucial component of the U.S. Navy fleet. Unlike destroyers which navigate high seas, LCS operates in littoral zones close to shorelines. There are two LCS variants the Freedom Variant and the Independence Variant. The Freedom Ship is a steel monohull design. It is 387.6 feet long, 57.7 feet wide, and has a 14.1 foot draft. It can accommodate up to 98 sailors and weighs approximately 3,450 metric tons when fully loaded. The Independence variant, however, is an aluminum trimaran design. It's 421.5 feet long. 31.6 feet wide and has a 4.6 foot draft. The warship has roughly 3,200 metric tons of full load displacement. The two classes feature a combined diesel and gas turbine with steerable water jet propulsion. generating massive speeds of 40 and 44 knots, respectively. Both are designed for diverse missions, including anti-access, mine countermeasures, and surface warfare. The LCS serves as a multi-mission platform these ships, notably smaller than destroyers, bring agility to naval operations, offering a speed advantage of 40 knots. Though smaller in size, their modular design facilitates mission-specific configurations. 40% of the ship hull can be easily reconfigured. She can play the role of a small assault ship with a flight deck and hangar suitable for two SH-60 or MH-60 Seahawk helicopters. Additionally, they are equipped with a stern ram for small boat operations and ample cargo volume to deploy a compact assault force with fighting vehicles. The LCS's ability to navigate in shallow waters sets it apart, allowing access to areas where larger ships cannot operate. If needed, the crew will deploy the MK-110 57mm guns and RIM-116 rolling airframe missiles to defend their ship.
Almost all US LCS are launched employing a side launch technique. In these ceremonies, the ship gracefully slides and falls into the water, creating a breakthrough moment that captures both emotions and the imagination. The warship is placed side on to the water on a slipway. Oil and wax or steel rollers might be used to help with the smooth slide. The slipway extends into the water and the warship slides under its own power. Then, thanks to its great buoyancy and stability, it became steady and ready for the first mission. Newly constructed warships are subject to several tests to ensure their resilience in combat scenarios. Full shock trials, a crucial evaluation, assesses the ship's ability to withstand the impact of underwater explosions. Surviving this test means the USS Jackson has remarkable stability. During the trials, controlled underwater explosive charges were strategically detonated in proximity to the USS Jackson. Another type of warship used by the U.S. Navy is the Landing Platform Dock, or LPD. These vessels are particularly tailored to support amphibious warfare operations. The ship enables the transportation and deployment of Marines landing craft and equipment for amphibious assaults. It's characterized by a well deck at the stern, which can be flooded to launch and recover amphibious vehicles and landing craft. The construction of these platforms starts with the meticulous procurement of a large quantity of steel. carefully selected for its durability and strength. This raw material undergoes a transformation process, being shaped into hundreds of steel plates. These plates form the fundamental structure of the landing platform dock, providing the backbone for the vessel's resilience. Skilled shipbuilders assemble these components, incorporating advanced welding techniques and precision engineering. As the assembling continues, the ship gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The landing platform dock is then painted and transported from the shipyard to the dry dock. This maneuver requires precision to ensure the ship's integrity. Slowly, the warship moves to the platform. Once in position, tugboats come to assist. With their impressive bollard pole, they move the dry dock into a deep water area. The vessel's buoyancy helps it float as the dry dock submerges underwater. It will then move to the last stage of outfitting and sea trials. As the U.S. Navy engages in diversifying its fleet of battleships, appropriate launching methods become crucial to ensure safe mobilization after construction is completed. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.